Way back in 1993, Jurassic Park's filmmakers sold a special item to the public. This piece of merchandise was the theme park's brochure, which you can actually see on screen. During the Gallimimus Valley scene, Dr. Grant even states that he's using the map drawn in the pamphlet as a means of getting back to the visitor center. Now, within this brochure, you can find an assortment of different dinosaurs that lived on or were planned to live on the island. One of those happens to be the elusive Herrerasaurus, whose history we'll be going over today. Herrerasaurus made its first official appearance within Jurassic Park's brochure. While we don't see one physically appear on screen during the events of that particular film, it was factually on Isla Nublar in 1993. Jurassic Park the game shows us a small group of these animals hunting Jerry Harding and the others during their time on the Bone Shaker ride. Here, the carnivores were thrown from the attraction into the vast jungle trees below. While they aren't shown after this particular incident, most agree that the fall more than likely killed them. The evidence supporting this happens to come from the recently released report that the Dinosaur Protection Group put out to the public. Here we learn that four individuals were alive prior to the sabotage of the park systems, and unfortunately, all of them were found dead during the 1994 cleanup. Viable embryos of the creature were destroyed after a flooding of the cold storage units took place, and while DNA samples were luckily recovered on Site B, production of this asset was indefinitely put on hold. While little is known about this animal's involvement in Jurassic Park, Dr. Laura Serkin's journal entry on it does provide us with some intriguing information. It's in this record that we discover why Hammond bred the animal to begin with. Apparently, these Triassic predators were meant to be a safe alternative for the extremely dangerous Velociraptors. Though not nearly as smart as the raptors, Sorkin believes that their chase instinct make them nearly as dangerous. Oddly enough, this is the only major time this animal has made an appearance within anything story-related in the franchise. Nevertheless, it would still pop up here and there in a few interesting places. The first of which happens to be the Game Boy Advance title, Jurassic Park 3 Park Builder, in which you can breed one for use in your very own theme park. Another game the animal made a weird appearance in was LEGO Jurassic World. For some reason, the dinosaur is listed as being on Isla Sorna despite never showing itself to the player. For a long time, Jurassic Park the game was the only place in which you could see the Herrerasaurus in its full red-colored glory. That is, until Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom came around. One of the biggest things Jurassic fans are celebrating right now is the quality of Mattel's dinosaur toy line, and one of those toys is, surprisingly, of this super rare dinosaur. The toy company has even provided buyers with a pretty accurate depiction to the way it looked within Telltale's 2011 game. They didn't just stop there though, as a battle damage variant was also produced by the company with a totally different color scheme. Here, you can get the Herrerasaur in a very different brown and gold paint job. In my opinion, this is one of the coolest dinosaurs that has yet to be shown on film. I don't really know why the filmmakers have decided not to use a smaller theropod such as this, but hopefully we'll get to see it someday in the future. Its appearance on the Bone Shaker ride alone was enough to sell me on its role for the big screen. But what do you guys think? Would you like to see the Herrerasaurus in Jurassic World 3, or are you happy with it staying out of the movies for now? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. This dinosaur doesn't get much attention. Now, before I go, I want to thank my game wardens, as well as all of my engine executives. I'd also like to thank all of my park workers and engine hunters as well. Matt Davis, it means the world to me that you guys appreciate what I do so much, and I seriously am eternally grateful for every ounce of support that you've shown me. I could never say thank you enough, guys. Seriously, it means the world. Now, I'd like to thank you all for watching this video, and hope that you all enjoyed today's content. If you feel like I deserve it, I'd appreciate the like, and hope that you'll consider subscribing if you're interested in hearing from me again. I'll see you all in the next video, guys. And as always, take it easy.